Welcome to the bustling city of Hong Kong, a small but vibrant metropolis. In our daily lives, Hong Kong people rely heavily on various modes of public transportation, including railways, buses, minibuses, taxis, trams, and ferries. Additionally, cars, motorcycles, lorries, and trucks play significant roles in local transportation. Hong Kong is more than just a local hub. It is a world-class international city, a thriving center of global trade and commerce. With one of the busiest ports in the world and a robust transport industry, Hong Kong connects to destinations across the globe. However, with the increase in private cars from 400,000 in 2006 to 640,000 in 2020, a staggering 60% rise, carbon emissions from local and global transportation have become a pressing concern. Hello, I'm Ross Vermeer. In our previous two episodes, we discussed sustainability in the realms of clothing and food choices. Now, in this episode and the next, we shift our focus to the world of transportation, where we'll discover how local and international transport operators are collaborating to reduce carbon emissions and promote sustainable mobility within our cities. Transport is an essential component of our modern world, connecting people, goods, and ideas. But have you ever stopped to ponder the degree to which our transport choices consume vast amounts of energy and generate significant carbon emissions? Let's explore the profound impact transport has on our lives and the environment. Transport is a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, primarily through the burning of fossil fuels. These emissions, such as carbon dioxide and other pollutants, have harmful effects on our planet and our health. The harmful consequences of transport-related emissions are evident in our daily lives. Air pollution caused by vehicle exhaust can lead to respiratory problems, cardiovascular diseases, and even premature death. Our cities become less livable, affecting our quality of life. Recognizing the urgency to address these challenges, the United Nations has adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, comprising 17 Sustainable Development Goals. One of these goals focuses on ensuring sustainable mobility for our cities. Sustainable mobility aims to reduce carbon emissions and create a cleaner, healthier and more efficient transport system. It involves promoting alternative modes of transportation, such as walking, cycling and public transit, while encouraging the use of low-carbon vehicles. To achieve sustainable mobility, it is crucial to foster collaboration amongst governments, private sector organisations and individuals. Governments can play a vital role by implementing policies that prioritize public transportation, encourage the development of cycling infrastructure, and provide incentives for the widespread adoption of electric vehicles. Over the past decade, the Hong Kong government has allocated more than 47 billion Hong Kong dollars towards a range of carbon reduction measures. But their commitment doesn't stop there. In the next 15 to 20 years, they plan to invest an additional 240 billion Hong Kong dollars to support a series of actions that will make a lasting impact. Major actions include developing distributed renewable energy, managing energy demand, enhancing energy efficiency and conservation in both new and existing buildings, decarbonizing the vehicle fleet to reach zero vehicular emissions, 
and transforming our waste management system to cease landfilling of municipal waste, among others. The government has formulated the roadmap on popularization of electric vehicles towards zero vehicular emissions before 2050. To effectively address climate change, it is essential for the entire community to work together. While the government plays a crucial leading role, the transport sector also has a significant part to play by investing in renewable energy sources, driving the development of innovative transportation technologies, and promoting sustainable practices throughout their operations. Now, let's hear from some key representatives from our transport sector as they share their insights on achieving the zero emissions target in alignment with the timeline set by the Hong Kong government. So as a low carbon public transport operator, I would say that sustainability has really always been a part of the way that we've done business. The installation on Pak Hearn Depot is actually the largest flexible installation on a single building in Hong Kong, it's got over 2000 solar panels. We've also installed solar panels on one of our light rail vehicles. We've carried that out as a trial project and we'll look at the results to see whether it's worth rolling out. Really excitingly, um, in terms of light rail, the government has recently approved a trial of a hydrogen powered light rail vehicle. So we'll be doing this without passengers initially to see whether this is a technology that we could adopt going forward. And we're gradually in the process of replacing our bus fleet with e-buses. So again, we have our first e-bus on trial and by 2026, we should have about 30 in our fleet. And finally, when we're building new railway stations and, and networks and property developments, we're committed to coming up with low carbon designs for those future buildings. So Hinkeng Station, which is really our model green station, it has a large green roof and we use a lot of natural lighting and ventilation, as well as environmentally friendly materials to provide shading from the sometimes harsh weather conditions in Hong Kong. It was the first railway station in Asia to attain a BRIAM rating uh, and currently rated as very good. We're doing some station improvement works at the minute to hopefully get it up to an excellent rating. And we've committed for all of our future new lines that our stations will achieve at least beam plus gold. So for one of our new projects, the Tung Chung Line Extension, the two new stations there, Tung Chung Line East and West, have both been provisionally awarded a Beam Plus Gold certification. So in addition to our carbon reduction efforts, we've been doing a lot of work around waste reduction. You may have seen the recycling bins in our stations and also free water dispensers or water vending machines so we can encourage people to not use single-use plastic. And we've been seeing what we can do with our old trains. So you may remember last year, we retired some of our midlife refurbished trains from the East Rail line, which garnered a lot of public support and attention. And so we've reached out to people to say, what could we use these trains for? And as a result of that, we've installed some strap hangers and some handrails in elderly homes, uh, some seats in schools. And we've actually built a railway themed classroom in a special education needs school in Hong Kong to support experiential learning. Well, Zongfu, in a traditional sense or in a core sense, is exclusive retailer for Mercedes-Benz passenger cars, as well as commercial vehicles. And we're, we're honored to be a partner, a long-standing partner with the Mercedes-Benz Group. And we're also the Daimler Trucks and Buses general distributor, as well as for Hyundai and Photon. In terms of product lineup or the business opportunity, let's say, uh, we're very fortunate that are the current brands we've partnered with are leaders in this forefront with Mercedes-Benz really doubling down in EV and new energy vehicles. And you can see it, it's been explosive from maybe two, three years ago, it was only one full electric vehicle as a choice, like EQC. In the last two years or so, it's, it's getting to close to 10 new models, ranging from all sorts of customer needs so that really we're giving customers a full choice. It's no longer a compromise to go electric so that customers can start making this journey and that we guide them along this way. But it's not just for passenger cars, it's for corporates too that have fleets and that have really big ESG ambitions. We're working with them to see how we fulfill those needs. What is the right roadmap? What are the right choices for different use cases in a corporate setting? 
And how do we help them get the most out of their fleet in terms of minimizing downtime, solving big questions like charging and infrastructure, and also training people to make sure they know how to utilize these new technologies in the best way and get the most out of it. For KMB, we are working towards uh, developing an entirely um, zero emission fleet. So all of the, the, the buses will eventually be, be changed to zero emission vehicles. And we have a vision that we can go green perhaps as early as 2040, uh, but certainly by 2050, which is the, uh, the government's guideline target for zero emission vehicles. But also outside of the, the bus fleet, um, we are also uh, having some other uh, initiatives such as installing solar panels. So we have solar panels on our buildings, uh, we have solar panels on our buses, and we have solar panels on some uh, bus shelters. So when they're on uh, roofs and on the, the bus shelters, they're either used to operate some uh, equipment, for example, lights in, in, in the bus shelters, or some of that electricity is fed back into the grid. Uh, and on the buses, it's used to operate some of the equipment, which means that we don't have to uh, generate so much emissions in uh, powering uh, the equipment on board the buses. So in addition to the solar panels, uh, we also have a, a, a driver behavior monitoring system on board the vehicles. Um, and this uses telematics uh, to uh, encourage the uh, bus captains to have uh, better driving behaviors. 透過專利程式和GPS的系統,它會提供一些實時的反饋給我們,令到我們可以在線學習,另外可以提升我們的技術。另外,相信也有跟其他同事的交流,我們會有通往綠燈,聽到是不是有多少分,多少分。This is good in terms of safety, but it's also good that it encourages positive driving habits, which have in turn reduced fuel consumption and emissions. We pledge to deploy a full fit of zero emission buses by 2045, which is five years significantly earlier than the government carbon neutrality plans. By deploying full fit of zero emission buses, we can also encourage citizens to switch to the public transport and move away from the private cars, in which this can greatly reduce the carbon emissions as well as the traffic congestions. In the past few months, the electric double-decker has deployed to different routes, for example, the long-haul routes and the urban routes. Its performance is varies quite differently through these routes. And from our testing, we find that the electric double-decker performs better in the long-haul route than the urban routes, because there's less frequent start stop of the highway long-haul route. For the urban routes, there are more bus stops through the routes. It generates a greater loading to the air conditioning system because the air conditioning will escape through the exit door when passenger boarding. Also, the charging time of battery electric bus is quite long. It will take three hours to recharge the batteries. We have to use the strategies of midday charging. Midday charging means the bus has to be charged at depot or terminus in order to top up the batteries, capacities, and fulfill the daily operations. Zhuliang船务 始终坚持将ESG工作融入到日常的运营当中，以使多积极的利用企业自身的资源，践行国家及香港政府节能减排、利市环保的理念，坚持开放和使用利市清洁、节能环保的传播事实。同时，珠江船务也积极地融入香港政府可再生发展的计划在仓库、码头、新渡轮公司采用太阳能等可再生的资源来支持能源的消耗珠江船务所说屯门珠江仓马、屋顶、太阳能光伏项目顺利地发电并网助
碳纤维船舶凭借着重量更轻、强度更高、航速更快、且耐腐蚀、低油耗等优点，得到了粤港澳大湾区地方政府和机构的支持和认可。未来，相信在船舶制造业的发展进程中，碳纤维船舶的推广与应用将会是主要的发展方向。Keeping track of progress towards sustainability goals. Can be challenging, and this holds true for transport operators as well. Now, let's hear about the specific challenges they are facing. We're talking about carbon targets and talking about commitments. Well, we're working with independent uh, body to set science-based targets for for our carbon emissions, whether it's scope one, two, and three. But also pairing that, just as importantly, with an action plan to make it our reality. In a time frame that's meaningful, and we're in the process of working that through, and I hopefully be very excited to share it with you soon, when we're able to confirm it and share our roadmap, and share it with our customers and share it with our partners as well, because this journey is, I don't think it can be achieved by one single party. To be truly successful and sustainable, you need an ecosystem or partnerships to to unlock that. And and finally, I mean, certainly not the least important is people that we mentioned as a major topic. And I think for people, it's great to have targets and roadmaps, but to really make it happen, you need your people on board, focused, but also enabled and equipped with the right skills,、uh, capabilities, and resources to do this. And you know, Zhongfu remains 100% committed to this. That we're investing in the development of our teams, and it could be. For core development, such as our workshop, our technicians, our mechanics, our frontline staff, to be able to have the latest know-how to operate high-voltage systems, to know solutions around charging and and helping our customers answer quite tough new questions, that's important to build that expertise and capability, and and resource. So we continue to invest on the people side, and then continue to invest in the tools. Necessary for our teams to take those first few steps and drive the momentum in this movement as well. Then, looking on the infrastructure side, more the hardware side, we do have a challenge around making sure that the infrastructure is there to support the appetite for transition, and that could be as simple as making sure there's enough charge points to make sure that the customer journey around EV is convenient. And makes sense, and it can also be a wider picture, looking at the overall solution about energy mix around kind of transmission of that. What's the right set of solutions that makes sense for our market? Is it going down a hydrogen fuel cell side, or is it changing the mix upstream from less carbon-intensive energy sources to more green energy sources? All of these are big questions that require multi-stakeholders to come together. And align on. So one of the challenges is obviously funding the transition to a low carbon future. Some of these initiatives will reduce our energy consumption and over time reduce our electricity bills. There is, of course, an initial cost、uh, for the corporation to pay. While I think,、uh, from a financial perspective, these projects will absolutely pay off in the long term, we also see that we're getting pressure from other stakeholders. So be that the regulators, be that the stock exchange, in terms of the forthcoming、uh, changes to the listing rules. Putting more demanding requirements on listed companies to report, particularly on climate change. Again, we see that it's absolutely worthwhile for us to be investing in these initiatives. One of the biggest、um, challenges is about the infrastructure、uh, that's required for for new energy buses.、Um, so, building in that infrastructure、um, is, is is a big challenge. It requires a lot of work, a lot of cost, and also、um, a lot of planning. Um, to make sure that it's all done uh, uh, to the best operational efficiency, but then we also need to work on our own staff capability. New energy buses involve new technology.、Uh, we need to to ensure that our staff、uh, can handle that, whether in terms of the driving or in terms of the uh, maintenance, uh, for example. And then we will also have、uh, the the technology itself. As you're aware, new energy technology is developing quite fast. And it's how we can incorporate that、uh, into whatever we're doing.、Um, and if you consider that you have to bring all of those together to meet this tight timeline,、uh, perhaps as early as 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 
then it involves quite a, a significant challenge for us. So another challenge in terms of adopting the new energy buses is that it does involve significant cost. Uh, and we have to, to allow for this upfront. So um, we can get some of the money through, some of the funding can come through subsidies. Uh, the government has various initiatives from time to time to encourage either the adoption of, of new energy buses or the trialing of new energy buses. So we can get some help there. Um, but ultimately, we're going to have to try and build that into our business costs because that's where the, the majority of the, the financing is going to come from. Um, we need to convince the passengers that it is actually a worthwhile um, endeavor to go green. It's going to cost more money. We won't pass on all of the costs um, to the passengers. We'll try and find other ways of absorbing it. But ultimately, it, it will inevitably lead to, to higher operating costs, which could in turn lead to higher fares. Citybus launched the world's first triaxial hydrogen double deck bus, demonstrating our commitment to advancing hydrogen development. Citybus has collaborated with multiple government departments to kick off Hong Kong's new hydrogen era. By putting our hydrogen bus in service and conducting extensive testing, we aim at gathering more statistics to assist the formulation of hydrogen-related policies and strategies. As previously mentioned, the battery electric bus requires charging facility to support in its daily service. Also, it requires additional parking space when the bus is charged at depot or terminus. It generates difficulties as land is so scarce in Hong Kong, so the government could support by providing land use of building the charging facility for the bus companies. Sustainability encompasses more than just climate change. It also involves human settlements, systems integration, social inclusion, and safety, all of which require support from the community and effective engagement strategies. Now, let's listen to what experts in these areas have to share. So uh, a second one of our, our key focus areas is social inclusion. And really as a public transport operator, this is at the heart of who we are and what we do because we operate a railway for everybody. No matter what background you may come from, no matter what disabilities people may have, uh, what gender they may be or what race they may be. And so we're focusing on what we call universal basic mobility. So this is making sure that our railway network is safe, affordable and accessible for everybody. So you may have seen in recent years, we've introduced lots of new facilities into our stations. And this is everything from wayfinding facilities to breastfeeding facilities and baby care rooms, to additional lifts and also stair lifts in areas where it's a little bit more difficult to introduce uh, a lift. And we're seeing through this just the benefit of increased accessibility to our network. We also look at diversity, equity and inclusion from a workforce perspective because we want our workforce to reflect the communities in which we operate. So I'm very proud to say that we set ourselves a 25% female target for our board of directors uh, for 2025 and we actually hit that earlier this year when we appointed two new female directors at our AGM. So hopefully we can lead the way for other listed companies in terms of showing what's possible. We're also then taking that thinking around DE and I down into our workforce and so we set up a gender equity network last year which is running a series of events. We're also carrying out a review of the language requirements of some of our job families so we can make sure we're opening up job opportunities to the broadest group of people possible here in Hong Kong. And we're looking at the accessibility of some of our office buildings. And finally, under social inclusion, we look at equal opportunities because we want to make sure that some of the underserved parts of the community here in Hong Kong get their fair share of access to opportunities. So our staff carry out an awful lot of volunteering activities in their spare time, supported by MTR, and we continue to work with our partner NGOs and some of their own community initiatives. But for us, um, sustainability uh, is not just about the zero emissions. Uh, we're also working on having uh, good social responsibility and good governance. And in terms of that, we want to promote an inclusive society. Uh, we want to offer um, a good job or employment benefits uh, to as many people within the community as we can. 
being a bus captain schedule, you know, it's very nice, especially the morning shift. Uh, you start work early in the morning, but then you get off around uh, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, depending on the overtime. So I feel like uh, you off at this time, go home, enjoy time with family and your kids. Uh, on top of that, KMB also uh, makes good use of um, the resources that we are using. So, for example, we donate retired uh, uh, buses to schools and other organizations. Uh, some are used as classrooms and, and some are used as libraries. We also donate um, used uh, bus poles uh, to some of the um, old people homes. Um, they're particularly helpful for patients with dementia. Uh, it helps them to have a more familiar uh, surrounding and can help with their uh, treatment. We have arranged different visits for the government officers, the legislative council members, as well as professional bodies for our battery electric bus as well as hydrogen fuel cell bus in order to introduce the cutting edge technologies. We have also arranged a series of community events for the public to visit these new energy buses. As we come to the end of our program, let's reflect on the significant advances we've witnessed towards sustainable transport in Hong Kong. Recently, we've seen the debut of many new electric vehicle brands, with vendors setting up their sales and after-sales facilities right here in Hong Kong. This indicates a growing trend towards embracing electric mobility. Exciting collaborations are also taking place. The Hong Kong and China Gas Company, better known as Town Gas, and Bravo Transport Services, the parent company of CityBus, have signed an agreement to explore the use of hydrogen as an alternative fuel source and to develop a hydrogen refueling station. KMB are also making their mark with new electric buses capable of carrying up to 115 passengers and charging in just two hours. These buses also feature solar power panels on their roofs and energy efficient LED lights inside. Our interviews with various transport operators in Hong Kong have revealed their tremendous efforts toward providing more sustainable transport options. These initiatives are aligned with the electric vehicle roadmap announced by the Hong Kong government in March 2021. It's important to recognize and appreciate these contributions. We believe that a collaborative effort involving the Transport Department, the Environmental Protection Department, and various transport operators and energy enterprises is essential. Now is the time to unite and work together to determine the right solutions and models for Hong Kong's low carbon transformation. In line with this vision, the Hong Kong government has developed a new plan to promote carbon neutrality in Hong Kong before 2050. Let's make a commitment to push forward with clear timelines and a steadfast dedication to long-term sustainability. And now, before we close, let's hear from Simon Arnold as he shares his suggestions. If individuals do small daily choices that kind of add up over time and over a whole community can make a big impact. So, for example, if you choose to take more sustainable modes of transport or choose to go EV, is one big step around that. You can make choices about what type of electricity do I want to use to charge my EV? Do I want to offset this with carbon credits or make sure that it's green energy? But of course, even if you're not using or driving an EV, there's other parts of your daily lifestyle that you can adapt, whether it's around consumption, around minimizing waste, all sorts of responsible decisions that personal micro level might seem relatively insignificant given the size of the problem. But actually, it's strength in numbers. If we all do this consistently, day in, day out, small steps, it's a huge amplifying. And stakeholders, corporates, government bodies, 
will be able to see this appetite and momentum and will, of course, I'm sure, support it as well in their own ways. So that, again, it's an amplifying, it snowballs. So no step is too small, I suppose, my advice or, or feedback to that. The key is make those small steps frequently and consistently and just promote that commitment and ethos of living a sustainable kind of life and making these decisions that we believe in are right, not just for today, but also for tomorrow. Indeed, every individual has the power to make a difference just by taking small steps. By choosing sustainable modes of transport, embracing carpooling, and reducing unnecessary trips, we can work together to reduce carbon emissions and create a greener and more sustainable future for Hong Kong. Thank you for watching.